when you uh, hire Louis van Gaal, you hire also the philosophy of uh, Louis van Gaal. When your wife is dying, that has a, a big influence on you. Mourinho was shouting at me and the president, you have to fulfill your dream. Football management is a tough job in a harsh and unforgiving industry. Success is all that matters, and failure is shown no mercy. In nearly 30 years of covering the sport that I love, I've been fortunate enough to watch the great and the good at work, up close and sometimes very personal. But now I want to dig deeper, to find out what it takes to be a celebrated and successful manager what they were born with, who inspired them, and what they've learnt on their way to the very top of the game, the changes they've seen in football, and the changes they've helped create. These are my football godfathers. To not just manage, but win armfuls of trophies and titles as iconic footballing institutions such as Ajax, Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Manchester United, you have to have two things outstanding ability and a big personality. Louis van Gaal has both in abundance. Next time, no press allowed. You have to do what I want. Often described as a genius and arrogant in the same breath, we've come to Portugal to assemble a portrait of one of the Dutch masters. I can see why you call this paradise. I was always authentic. It's a stupid question. You see what you see with me. Goodbye. My life was always a life of success. That was a heavy uh, battle. He interfered a lot, and that was not nice. What was your very first footballing memory? On the streets. Uh, at that time, you could play on the streets. And uh, we play uh, between lampposts. I was six, I, I, I come out of a family of uh, nine children, four brothers and four sisters. And all the brothers play football. I was six and I played with my brothers, 10 years older. So for me, it was fantastic. Perfect training ground. It was not like, okay, my little brother has to play with them. No, no. They were proud that I was there in their team. I was uh, above average student. I was above average uh, football player. I, I, I was above average baseball player. I ha had a lot of uh, success with, with uh, my notes on school but also in football teams on school. We uh, became the champion of Amsterdam, for example. So my life was always a life of success. And then you are accept accepted as a leader because my character is also, I, I organized uh, street matches between streets and I selected my teams. For example, I, I was also a student uh, at the physical academy I was at that time 70 years old, and I have to teach uh, boys from 2021. And I did it. <laughs> it's unbelievable, but I did it. Tell me about your life as a footballer and balancing it with being a physical education instructor at the same time. Yeah, in the Netherlands, you have, uh, still you have, semi-professional clubs. And uh, I was a teacher. I was first uh, a full prof professional player in Belgium, uh, Antwerp. And uh, I didn't play every match, and I want to play every match. So I return after four years to the Netherlands back, and I want to pick up my, my study and teach children. And, and, and then uh, 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 a lot of clubs uh, came to me to be, to be a semi-professional player.
my day uh, was always uh, seven uh, o'clock uh, awake, eight o'clock with the car in traffic jam, uh, and 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 uh, and I arrived there nine o'clock, and then till two, uh, I give lessons, and then uh, I have to travel uh, eight years to Rotterdam from Amsterdam, so, and also in a traffic jam, and I have to be there at half past three. And uh, I came always one minute before, but that was accepted. I was also the captain there. And, and then I have to train with, with, with uh, mostly youngsters. So it was a life that was uh, very busy. And I, I brought uh, two children up with my wife. My wife did everything, but uh, uh, I was at home at, at seven o'clock or eight o'clock. That was my life. Do you think one of the, the key moments in your life was when you joined Ajax as the youth coach? Yeah, I remember that. I said it to my uh, mom, I uh, can be a professional coach at Ajax and I have to start in, in the under 19. And then my mother said, son, son, you, you are a teacher now. It's for your whole life. And when you go in the world of football, you never know. And uh, nevertheless, I did it. Uh, and I didn't follow her advice. Uh, which, was, which I would imagine is a big thing, because as I understand, you were very fond yeah, of your mother. Yeah, my mother raised me, because my father died when I was 11. And also my brothers and sisters raised me because I was the youngest, but my mother was the most important uh, human being on earth. And, uh, but she said that, but I want so, so <laughs> much to, to be uh, a, a trainer coach. All my friends want signatures of the players, and I want a signature of Linus Michels. I think at that time I know already I shall not be a top professional player, so I have to study for trainer coach, because I admire Linus Michels, and I want uh, to be him. So I want to be uh, uh, a trainer coach of Ajax Amsterdam, and I became trainer Ajax. Oh. You achieved it? Yes. He was quoted as saying, Louis van Gaal is damn arrogant, and we like arrogant people here. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what did you make of that when he said that? And that is not arrogancy, but but uh, confidence in, in your in yourself, in your philosophy. I have a philosophy. I believe in the total human principle. I see a player not only uh, like a player who can pass the ball from A to B, but I see also a human being. As a human being, you have uh, in your environment a lot of things that you have to manage. And when you cannot manage these things, then you play also uh, worse. That's why uh, uh, you have to see not only the player, but also what is his uh, environment, how good it is with his wife and his children, and so on. It's, it's difficult because not every player wants to talk about that, but you have to try it. So tell me then about the next fantastic six years at Ajax and just how you achieve that success. It's, it's of course also a, a lot of luck. In the first eight months, it was not going uh, well.
the fans were shouting against me and uh, uh, yes. and, and Johan Cruyff, they shouted for Johan Cruyff. Bring back Cruyff. Cruyff. And then at the end of the season, we won the UEFA Cup. So uh, at that time, okay, they accepted me. We played with a very young team. The players were very open for me. And, and, and yeah, in my philosophy, the team is more important than the individual player. So all these youngsters and also the old players accept uh, that. And that's uh, very important. We played like a team. And at that time, we had also a, a, a big talents. In Ajax Amsterdam, I had several players I, I could use. And because I was the trainer coach of them in under 19, Davids, Seedorf, Reiziger, Kluivert, uh, I, I have trained them in, in the youth. So I did know uh, the characters of the players, but also uh, the quality of the players. It's also a, uh, the circumstances, mm. uh, luck of the circumstances and uh, the very good uh, youth department of Ayers. Where I am very proud of is, is the way we played football. Why? It was so uh, attractive and, and so nice to see. But we played like a team and, and, and we had the quality to play uh, that kind of football. And uh, as, as a trainer coach or as a manager, you are, always, uh, you are always dependable of the quality of your players. As a manager, you want always the perfect game at the right moment and that's the final. Mourinho was shouting at me and the president, I think the biggest disappointment in my career. I'm with Louis van Gaal, a football godfather whose record as a manager is up there with the very best. My life was always a life of success. A coach who has won no less than 20 major trophies across four countries. A man with a single-minded philosophy about how the game should be played. I believe in the total human principle. I see not only a player, I see also a human being. On the 24th of May, 1995, the 43-year-old coach faced the biggest game of his life. His young Ajax side were taking on the reigning European champions, AC Milan, in the Champions League final. The process to the final is the most important uh, in your uh, career. As a, as a manager, you want always the perfect game and at the right moment, and that's the final. It was the superb moment, and of course, I had changed two players, and, and, uh, and, and one of them was Kluivert, and he scored the winning goal. So also, as a manager, you are proud that you have done that. I'm always proud when, when uh, you win something. Van Gaal was flush with football success. His Ajax side, with an average age of just 23, had quite literally won the lot. In six glorious seasons, they won three league titles, the Dutch Cup, the UEFA Cup, the UEFA Super Cup, the Champions League and the World Club Championship. But the success and jubilation Van Gaal was enjoying on the field were in stark contrast to the tragedy unfolding in his private life. My first wife, the mother of my children, died uh, before that I won my first championship in the Netherlands. When your wife is dying, that has a, a big influence on you, but also on my uh, environment. And, and, uh, and my children, I have to raise my children. 
At that time, they were 15 and, 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 and 17 years old, 18 years old. What do you want? Do you want your daddy uh, more at home? Or can we live uh, like we have lived uh, all, uh, all in, in the past? Because they have to decide. And then we have to make a structure, a plan. Because they decided, oh no, you have to uh, ful uh, fulfill your dream. Because they know also that that was my dream. And uh, we have managed uh, the first years to, to continue in the spirit of my wife. And my environment also wants to give that championship. So all, all my players were also inspired uh, to give everything because of my wife. I could sign for AC Milan, but I didn't sign because uh, they were not so interested uh, in, in my philosophy mm. uh, in the conversation. And I think that's the most important thing because when you uh, hire L Louis van Gaal, you hire also uh, 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 the human being and also the philosophy of uh, Louis van Gaal. So uh, I said, uh, okay, no, I, I, do, I don't want to do that. And in spite of uh, they are offering a lot, I said, no, I'm sorry. Nichols was the first trainer coach of Barcelona. That was also an argument to, to take Barcelona, of course. For me, it's an icon. I said, I like to be the director of the youth education because then I can learn the language better before I am the head coach. And I get used to the culture of uh, the country. But then uh, uh, when I arrive in June, uh, I hear uh, at that time that I am the head coach and uh, that I have to follow up uh, uh, Bobby Robson. And then we had a, a meeting uh, with Bobby Robson and uh, Jose Mourinho because he was the assistant of Bobby Robson. And uh, the, the president of uh, Barcelona said uh, uh, to me that I became the manager. And, and Robson, Bobby Robson was very uh, silent, didn't say anything. But then Mourinho was shouting at me and the president. And uh, I was a little bit confused. But I saw uh, at the reactions of Bobby Robson that the president already has told him that, and not to uh, Mourinho. At Barcelona, you were able to promote from the youth team and start the careers of yes. some players who have gone on to become household names across the world. Yeah. I do not want uh, uh, 30 stars in my uh, group. You have to uh, make uh, uh, space for youngsters. So uh, everywhere uh, where I have uh, worked, I give three youngsters or four youngsters, dependable of the quality of, of uh, the youth department, a chance to develop themselves in the, uh, the first selection. Uh, Chafi, Iniesta, Puchol, Valdez, Mota is now playing Paris Saint-Germain. These five players played at Barcelona and I give them the first match. So uh, uh, I think that is the consequence of my philosophy that I give them more chances. It 
is not a good period because uh, I, uh, I, I didn't uh, fulfill my, my dreams. I, I didn't reach uh, the championship uh, or the tournament of the uh, World Cup. So that's a big disappointment. I think the biggest disappointment in my career. That was a heavy uh, battle. He interfered a lot, and that was not nice. Goodbye. I was always authentic. You see what you see with me. I was uh, above average student. I was above average uh, football player. My life was always a life of success. I'm in Portugal, the adopted home of footballing godfather Louis van Gaal, a Dutch master of the game and one of the select band of managers to won league championships in three different countries. The first eight months, it was not going uh, well and the fans were shouting against me. Van Gaal's stellar coaching career began to falter. He had an unsuccessful spell as Dutch national team manager, followed by brief and unhappy returns to both Barcelona and Ajax. His next choice of club was a surprise. The outcome, even more so. Is it possible to sum up what happened at Azel El Kmar? I said it was, was a club, uh, a small club, uh, picked up by, by a multimillionaire, and he uh, could invest in young players. So we selected a lot of uh, youngsters of the Olympic team under 23. And yeah, I, I could make a team of it. Uh, that's my uh, speciality. And yeah, the first year we were already second. And the second year we were first at the last uh, uh, match of the season. And we lost against the lowest club in, in, in the league. And we lost also the final in the cup. So uh, in spite of a great season, it was not so good season. Third season, we uh, selected and selected, reselected, but the balance in, in the selection was not good. And I have to uh, correct too much, and at the end, uh, it, it was not good in the dressing room. We were 11 at that time, and I was afraid to relegate. And I said to my uh, president and my uh, technical director, I said, I think I quit because uh, when I'm here, I have no good influence on the dressing room. I said, okay, I quit, but they don't want to quit me. The players uh, came to my house and, and the captain and uh, three or four players, and they said, no, no, it is not your fault. It is our fault. You have to come back and okay. Then I said, okay, but then everybody has to do exactly what I say. So I reselected again because the balance was not good. And then the next year we were the champion. It's unbelievable. Does that particular phase of your career have a special place in your heart? Yes, I, I am always saying that it's my best period. Remind you of what you said when you arrived of Bayern Munich. You said they are self-confident, dominant and arrogant. Honest, hard-working, but also cordial and familial, like me. Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love discipline. <laughs> I love discipline. And I think the Germans are disciplined and they are 
physically always well trained. They scored in the last minute. Mentally very good. And I thought, I'm, I'm very thankful that I can go to that club. This selection was not in balance. Uh, for example, they had uh, 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 three strikers. But in my system, only they could play with one striker, for example. But I changed my system for them in, in 4-4-2. But that was not a great uh, success. That was a heavy uh, battle. Uh, not all, uh, uh, only with my players, but also with uh, the, the uh, technical director at that moment, that was Uli Heudis. And uh, he interfered a lot, and that was not nice. Did you think you were, he at that point, heading for the sack? Of course. Uh, I can say also, my first year in Ajax Amsterdam, I, I uh, mentioned already that the fans were shouting on Cruyff. I went to Osasuna, and uh, when I lose that game, then I was sacked, I'm sure. And nobody has heard any more of Louis van Gaal in the world of football, I believe. Was that the one result that changed your fortunes yes. at Bayern Munich? Yes, yes. Uh, I cannot say uh, in another way. It is, it is like it is, and uh, yeah, I was very happy because Juventus is also a big club, and and then you can beat them uh, uh, away, and we were f uh, further in the group, and then. Uh, Everybody accept also your philosophy because it was always a battle uh, at that time, and then everything is going smoothly. We were uh, ch we became the champion. We we played a very good season. Anybody in this room not a feeling to apologize to me? It's a stupid question, I think. <laughs> it's a stupid question. Louis van Gaal's army! Mr. Mike Smalling. Oh, Chris, sorry. <laughs> I believe it was a rather good performance. I was very pleased. But uh, against... Uh, what was Stoke. Stoke. And I give it to you. You can copy it. And then you go to Big Sam, and maybe he can give a good interpretation. Cheers. Cheers. Goodbye. Has it ever bothered you that people have this image of you as a, a difficult and aggressive person? <laughs> <laughs> now, because on the streets, uh, I never have seen uh, that somebody wants to uh, kill me or, or shout at me. Uh, always the people are very friendly uh, to me, but also because of uh, irritating questions at, at, uh, at the wrong moment, then you are irritated because <laughs> I, of that. I can see you getting irritated thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. but, I was always authentic, and and uh, and and uh, therefore honest. You see what you see with me. I think probably one of the best images of you in Germany is when you celebrated the championship on the balcony in the Lederhosen. You looked like a man in your element. There were so many people on that square. They want to be entertained. They come for something. 
and not only uh, to see uh, uh, the cup and that's it. What are you most proud of from your time at Bayern? We have created uh, youngsters in the first team. Müller, first team, uh, Badstuber, Alaba, Philip Lahm, he was left fullback. I put him at the right and he has had a fantastic career. Uh, and I have to fight for that. So uh, then the system, they play uh, still the same si system. Always uh, when I uh, leave a club that I uh, give them an heritage. So uh, maybe that's what I like the most. It's fair to say you took the world by surprise. That I, that I have heard a lot of times, yeah. I did not know what was happening. You know that I was sex, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that. I'm with Louis van Gaal, a football godfather, one of the most successful and dominant figures of the last three decades. I have a philosophy. I believe in the total human principle. Did you think you were heading for the sack? Of course, I was sacked. I'm sure. If it were possible to go back in time, what advice would you give a young Louis van Gaal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think for me, eh, for me personally, uh, not for the general uh, manager, but for me personally, uh, I think uh, that I have to count till 10 before I answer the questions. Not only uh, the media, but also my players. You think possibly, Lenny, you're a little bit too quick to respond? Yes, and too open. That's also very good, because uh, that makes me authentic. Uh, I think that's a, a good uh, habit, but it uh, have uh, given me also problems. <laughs> When you took the national team of the Netherlands for the second time, did you feel it was unfinished business? Was it still hurting? The biggest disappointment in my career as a manager is the failure uh, in 2002. I want uh, to give uh, to have a revenge, and we achieved uh, a lot uh, with that uh, revenge because nobody expected some uh, thing uh, from us because the quality of the individual players were not so high. But the team and the team spirit was the highest I ever worked with. I remember at the time you had, uh, you had already agreed to be the manager of Manchester United after the tournament, but you made the decision that you would not talk about Manchester United whilst you were with the <laughs> Netherlands. Sure. And I, I, I came to the hotel to see Arsene Wenger uh, for a coffee or something, and I saw you, I said, hello, to introduce myself next season, I'm with Sky Television, I look forward to seeing the Premier League, you said, I'm the manager of the Netherlands. Goodbye. <laughs> Walked off. Yeah. Because you wouldn't entertain any questions about Manchester United. No. It's a stupid question, I think. It's a stupid question. We have to focus on, on, on uh, my team, on my players, on uh, the chances of where I work uh, for. And... Uh, but yeah, that, that's not so nice. I, I can understand that you uh, think at that time, what uh, arrogant um, uh, human being is that? I'm sorry for that, but, but I think that I was correct. it's very difficult to do anything really different but I think it's fair to say 
you took literally not just the Costa Ricans but the world by surprise when you changed your goalkeeper for the shootout. That I, that I have heard a lot of times, yes. Yeah. Never he had uh, stopped a penalty. So the but chance that he stops a penalty uh, then is also not so uh, big. But we had t uh, uh, Tim Krul. Uh, he played for Newcastle United, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, he was a very uh, tall figure with with his his uh, spread of his arms was impressive. So. And he had a good uh, efforts in uh, uh, stopping penalties. So it, it was for me more or less like that. Do you think it had a psychological effect? Of course. Uh, the, the second um, match that we uh, finished with penalty was the, against Ar Argentina in the semi-finals. And then we were so much better than Argentina that I thought I have to change now an extra striker. And I put Huntelaar in. But that was the wrong decision when you uh, uh, see it afterwards because I couldn't uh, change the, the goalkeeper anymore and uh, Silas has to stop the penalties. Manchester United, how do you reflect on it now? Very uh, uh, disappointing. Uh, we are not doing great. In, a, in, in, a, in, in the league, we are always four, fifth or third. Rashford. Uh, with uh, Manchester United is a big talent and, and, and uh, when uh, they are uh, talents in your time then you are a lucky manager. In my first year uh, I had other uh, talents from a lower level only lingered and, and uh, Rashford came only the second year then he, he was growing up. I'm always proud when, when uh, you win something. I was very proud, uh, for example, that we have won with Manchester United the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. And we win the FA Cup with 10 players. And Lingard, he scored the winning goal. Also uh, a little bit uh, like Clifford. One thing, an abiding memory, as you say, you are a very disciplined character, you like discipline, and you were always very like that, and as you say, cordial in your appearance and your interviews and your, the way you present yourself. So when we all saw you at Old Trafford lying on the floor in front of the fourth official, yeah. was that an out-of-body experience? <laughs> no. Well, I'm like that. I'm an emotional guy. I uh, say too much in, in interviews, and and uh, uh, I, I have done that also in in the final uh, in, in in Vienna in, in uh, uh, with the uh, uh, the second final I played the Champions League final uh, that uh, they cut Lindmanes his head off, and I, I did it. Uh, I, I jumped. The karate kick. The karate kick. And that I, I did also because it was such a, 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 a swalbe. Uh, what is the English word of that? Dive. Yes. Dive that uh, I have to uh, make an example of that. Get your scarves, your Mourinho scarves. You were, you were being asked about Jose Mourinho at Christmas. 
it was that that deep into the season but how damaging was it do you think for me yes when from the month of december they are talking about uh, Mourinho uh, in the media every day then you lose m mostly your authority in the d d dressing room uh, nevertheless I did not lose uh, my authority that's also a quality that uh, in spite of six months that uh, my head is already uh, uh, cut off that I still could uh, guide the dressing room but in my last six months of Manchester United it was uh, crashed by uh, uh, the media uh, and of course also the results they were not good enough I did not know what was happening you know that I was sex mm -hmm. and I didn't know that officially and then I came back to my uh, room of my wife and she has heard it in the elevator from the family from Ed Woodward that you've been sacked yeah uh, that that's of course the biggest disappointment uh, after the failure of uh, 2002 well goodbye I can accept that uh, because Mourinho was, was at that time free, that they want to have that manager because then they can continue at the highest level. Also at, uh, uh, in a view of the manager. Because the quality of Mourinho is of course a high quality. And with me, after a year, I was finished. So. Uh, that was also the exp uh, explanation of Ed Woodward, and I could accept that. But, it but was way tell it, was it to me at the right time and not uh, behind winning an FA Cup. It's easy now, looking back. Should you have done things differently to get better results? No, be because I have uh, no because I believe in my philosophy and uh, the titles I, I I have won with that philosophy. The philosophy has proved in every club, in every country, with other cultures, has proved that. Mm. But uh, I have asked uh, uh, many, many times for uh, uh, players of the highest quality. I, and, and I don't want to tell too much, but I didn't uh, get my players what I want at that time. You can tell too much, it's okay. No. Only I am disappointed in, uh, in, in the human beings, uh, of uh, certain human beings uh, of uh, Manchester United. And they know that I am disappointed. Louis, it's been fantastic. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Thank okay. you. You're welcome.